Cristiano Ronaldo is looking at properties in Dubai. What's going on Amar? Like, why are you selling off your hotels? What's up? Hello and welcome to your weekly news dump. My name is Artem. I'm CEO of Accord Properties. And this is weekly news where I talk about everything Dubai real estate or anything else that I found interesting this week. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That really helps us promote our videos. Let's get into the news. So <laughs> this week, um, a lot was going on this week. But first of all, that is my second attempt to record those news. This is my second attempt this week. The first attempt happened yesterday, late evening. And unfortunately, due to technical issues, I couldn't record news, so I'm recording it now on Saturday, not on Friday. Uh, why is that? It's because we got new kit. We got new really cool black magic camera, sorting out our live streams, our videos for the weekly news dump. And we will use it in our future podcasts. We will use it in our real estate walkthroughs, etc. It just us really upping our production potential uh, because we understand that being content forward is the most important thing you can do to show showcase people your business, to showcase people what you've got to offer. Really, I honestly believe it's an investment, but really, really, frankly. It's not an invest. It's not an investment. I just love cool tech gadgets. I love toys. This is great toy. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's great toy as well, right? Um, so, don't be surprised. You've seen the video. For people who know, very wide angle. I use right now. Most of the people who do the talking head, they use much narrower, much longer focal distance lens, but. To avoid the technicalities, the fatter you are, wider lens you need. So yeah, I'm actually at the point, I'm fat enough to use a wide-angle lens to film myself. Those joke, jokes write themselves, right? Shut up, the camera adds 10 pounds. Uh, so how many cameras are actually on you? Okay. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, I spent New Year's and we skipped a week because I was celebrating New Year's. And I celebrated New Year's in Dubai. I celebrated it, as I mentioned before, with full view of Burj Khalifa. The fireworks were amazing. Absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean, it's fireworks. But this time they were bigger. There was light show across it. Some, you know, decorative lights amplifying this effect. And yeah, it, w it was a really cool view. I'm, I don't know how other fireworks been. I definitely seen, seen some of the fireworks at Atlantis from downtown, but <laughs> I assume they're cool, but I don't know how they've been. I just know that downtown fireworks have been great. This year, obviously, you could buy a ticket and they increased the price significantly to enter downtown and see the fireworks. But honestly, this price increase was absolutely worth it to the people who paid because there was much less crowd and you could actually enjoy yourself. But paying as much as, I think, 1,200 dirhams for Starbucks table for that night is a little excessive. Otherwise, yeah, um, Mark is actually going very strong. It's surprising. I expected it to be right, very quiet right now, early days of January. But we're getting a lot of inquiries and we're working really hard. So that's surprising. That's very surprising to me, but that's good news. Um, more about the market and the space develops today with actual news. And on that note, let's get into the actual news. First in this week's news is a bit of celebrity talk as we did about Kanye a few weeks ago. We mentioned that Kanye is looking at properties in Dubai. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo is looking at properties in Dubai for a while now. And uh, he's been coming to Dubai on a regular for a long while. Currently, he has purchased a new property and it is mentioned that he is expected to move here at least semi-permanently. 
So his previous residence was a massive wheel in Jumeirah Bay, uh, which is funnily enough right next to David Beckham. David Beckham is also a very famous football star. I'm not a big fan of football myself, but as far as I'm aware, they are some of the biggest guys in the history of the sport, some of the richest guys in the history of the sport. And they're now both have residences in Dubai, both have real estate in Dubai and both invested into luxury real estate in Dubai. And quite honestly, when you are this wealthy, it makes a lot of sense to be based in Dubai just simply tax-wise. There's zero income tax. You can be a local tax resident. It's incredible infrastructure, a lot of luxury, uh, entertainment options, restaurants. Uh, weather is good for like seven, eight months a year which is also good, although it depends how you define great weather. I wish they had summer like they do winters, and a winter like winters are in Finland. But a lot of people would say it's too cold, but I love snow. I absolutely love snow. But you've come to the right place. And honestly, Dubai summers are a bit of a struggle, but most of those people have means to move to Mediterranean for that time, and Mediterranean in summer is perfect. We all know that. that that's beyond the argument. Climate-wise, in the summer, even possibly infrastructure-wise, in the summer, there is nothing better than Mediterranean. Uh, but in, for the most of the year, the uh, Cristiano will be residing in Dubai, it seems. And his current property is a 30,000 square foot mansion in Billionaires Island. Estimated price is at least $21 million. I assume it might be on the higher end because it's within the Billionaire's Island. Uh, they're estimating the highest square footage and the lowest price bracket at the same time, which doesn't really make sense. I mean, I feel like it should be closer to $30 million than it is to 20, but we don't have official statement or disclosure of that. So we can only guess. Maybe he picks up a great deal for which I applaud him, but I would tell... Should have came to us, talked with us, would have gotten a better deal. But, oh well. This is uh, essentially a global trend within wealthy investors to move to Dubai, to invest in Dubai. Uh, because uh, the deals here are great. And let's think about it again. You're making income here on your investment and you're not paying taxes on that income. That also optimizes your investment. Because, let's be honest, if you would pay large income tax in some other place, but would be getting way more, way more return on investment, which would cover this tax, that would be more profitable. Tax is only as important as your investment opportunities. So, uh, that's some great news. I encourage Ronaldo to enjoy his time in Dubai and spend much, as much time as he can here. Hopefully we'll see him around enjoying local restaurants and entertainment options. And all of the best. I'm really happy for the guy. To, he picked up a really good piece of real estate. So, yeah. On to the next news. So this is a bit of a real estate shop talk, but... Arabian Business published a really short snippet explaining the process of licensing real estate brokers in Dubai. Honestly, you will see quite a lot of brokers in Dubai being not really brokers, but being property consultants, right? Property advisors. It's simply a term to differentiate the licensed broker who can proceed with the transaction and... Um, employees and the brokers who are not licensed who will need access to licensed broker to create the contracts so the main difference is licensed broker can create contracts can create official contracts in dubai and can create secondary market sales right if you only do an off plan you don't need this license you honestly i'll be transparent selling off plan is twice the money for half the work that's why we don't do it all that much, because everybody tries to do it, and it seems like it's an easy job, and it seems like it's an easy score of money, but at the end of the day, I would 
rather not be focusing just on that. I would be focusing on the best investment for a specific client. So, for example, I do have my own my own license. Uh, some other people in our company do too, but a lot of brokers are still training to get their licenses, and it should not concern you. It should not worry you within the company. Within real estate company, if your broker doesn't have their own license, but their manager, their boss has a license, the only thing that means is we will go through this boss, through this manager to sign the contracts, to do the paperwork. They have to, to put their approval onto any, everything. So that just means that even if you get in somebody who's, let's say, less experienced and still learning some of the ropes, if the company is reliable, if the company is trusted like ours, all of his contracts will go for me or for one of my very trusted colleagues who have broker license attached to our company. This means that before any of our brokers creates any of the contracts, I, have, I or one of my colleagues who really know the regulations would look into it and will have to essentially sign on it. It's a great system. It really, really secures your transactions in secondary market. That's why off-plan is always considered a bit more risky than uh, secondary market in Dubai. So what you need to have to have this license is you need to be either GCC resident or you have to have Emirates ID. So you're Emirates resident with all the liabilities in the local jurisdictions, right? It's not that easy for you just, you know, to take off and never come back. You definitely have some strings attached already. That's one level of security. Then the next level is you need to go through training. You do not need to go through official certified training, although if you're working with somebody else, if you're yourself a broker or aspiring to be working up to your own license, I would recommend going with certified courses, strongly recommend, because they are the only ones to guarantee you commercially that they will teach you the correct curriculum, right? We have enough of expertise in our company that we train our own brokers internally to pass exams and they pass exams. We are blessed to have people who know that and who do that, who have their license for over a decade now. And the final, the most important bit is to take exam and pass it. Every exam will cost you upwards of $800. And once you pass the exam, you get your license. Exam will include a lot of legal specifics, a lot of market dynamics. So the licensed broker is actually a person who understands the market and more importantly, understands at least the base level of the legal landscape of real estate in Dubai, right? So having RARA card, really gives you this insurance of a person who creates any real estate transaction knows what they're doing you know simply knows what they're doing so once again um once you pass all of that you will be issued a digital license and you can ask for brn or broker registration number from your broker at any point of time you can see an open database where you can see the picture of your broker, their details, where which company they work for, and what transactions they create. My card is very recent because I don't do a lot of sales myself in person. Um, I leave it to our head of sales. And um, I very rarely have a transactions, but now the volume is so big and I learned enough of the ropes to be able to pass the exam and I passed my exam. Uh, and now I do check some of our transactions and a lot of transactions go for me as well, uh, which is great news for you, right? Um, although we can post my BRN in a later episode if I get enough requests here, you'll see there's not very many transactions. I just got my card, we're still working on that. 
Anyway, uh, th this was just excuse to me for me to explain to you how uh, broker cards work in Dubai. Do pay attention that somebody with a broker card involved in every transaction you do in Dubai, because without it, it's not a legal transaction. That's that simple. Let's get to the next one, right? So starting 1st of January, a single-use plastic bags will be banned in Dubai. Funnily enough, been done in a lot of places already, and I'm pretty used to plastic bags not being a thing in many, many, many places in the world. Like, you go to Germany, you don't get any plastic bags. In Dubai, you still can have plastic bags as long as they're sturdy enough to be at least theoretically multi-use. Most people I know already use shopper bags and feel like plastic bags are a waste. So it's not a big issue. And whenever you need a quick carry bag for a couple items you got, um, you'll get paper bag. And the funny thing is that next year we have other single use plastic products which will be banned. All the plastic cups, plastic stirs, table covers, you know, I don't care. They're banning plastic straws. Please leave me be. I just moved away from banned plastic straws. I hate the paper flavor in my drinks. Let me have my plastic straw, please. They want to ban straws. Has anybody ever tried those paper straws? They're not working too good, right? Before we ban plastic straw, straws, can we stop China polluting the, the whole of the Pacific Ocean? Once we sorted that out, we can move on to straws, okay? Can you pick your battles from a more important to the least important, not from the easiest to pick on to the hardest to pick on, okay? I do care about environment, but I absolutely hate environment activists because none of them have any sense in their approach. They, they are just out to create inconvenience to, to show us how nice they are rather than actually fix the issue. Anyway, on to the next news. So the regular one is the real estate transactions, weekly real estate transactions. So this week, 114 plots were sold for 1.36 billion and only 140 million worth of transaction, which makes sense. It's a New Year's. What happened is their calendar year is ending and businesses, they still trade, right? Uh, it's still business as usual. So they made some land transactions and they were the main driving factor. They were the largest transaction number by far this week. So there have been land, land transactions and land acquisition by brokers, by individuals, doesn't matter. Land is traded as it's traded, it's very stable. Um, but apartment transactions, because a lot of people are on vacation, a lot of brokers are on vacation, they've been moved from the, this week onto the next one, right? onto the one you actually see in this news. So we will see a little spike like end of January of all people kind of catching up to their transactions they planned out anyway. No real concern here. It's yeah, it's a very low transaction number, but it's New Year's Eve week. Everybody been just recovering from the party. Nobody been trading. Weekly transactions don't always tell you all that much data. And this is a perfect example. It's all land trades, but it's because it wasn't retail week, which is actually good, which means it's a healthy market. Nobody is rushing to sell or buy. People buying as they go within the normal circumstance of their life. They're not rushing. So this is actually good news this week. <laughs> Moving on to slightly less good news this week they're not necessarily bad they're just weird from travel trade which is a trade journal for international travel hoteliers you know the travel business and the news sounds as kempinski flag fly above two more landmark hotels in dubai and definitely kempinski what they're launching in al jadaf is pretty impressive and Kempin kempinski is very well represented in Dubai's market, putting their best foot forward. I've been to Kempinski hotels in numerous countries and absolutely love their service. Their interior quality is hit and miss because it's an ancient 
a hotel chain so some of their hotels are very much due for update but usually when you come in and they're due for update they are being updated and uh, they are in the process so at least by the time they get to a point where update is required they would come in and do that so i have no inherent issue with kempinski so the news are great yeah two new kempinski hotels but not really. It's Kempinski flag to fly above two more landmark hotels in Dubai, which means they are overtaking management of two hotels. So both of them are address hotels in downtown. One is the address Boulevard and the other one is address Dubai Mall. Funnily enough, those two addresses are right across the street from each other and are connected by a walkway. So I wonder if the Kempinski going to differentiate those hotels or kind of going to merge them into a single project right they look very different they've been built at very different stages of development of downtown and they look and kind of their benefits seem to be very different and their market focus so i assume they're going to keep it as two separate hotels being next to each other quite honestly it raises a lot of questions right uh why would first of all why would mr build five wait let me count it uh so it's a few moments later boulevard sky views mall downtown fountain views yeah it's five address hotels in downtown mr because address is network luxury sub brand of mr right and they built five of la five high-rise luxury hotels and residences in dubai downtown alone in the creek, for now, we only have two towers, which is fine. Uh, we have a few other addresses across the city, kind of scattered around around Mars developments or near to Mars developments. And all of the addresses are this hybrid formula where usually about half of it would be a hotel, half of it would be residences. Sometimes... And even in more cases, what they would do is the hotel half will also have hotel managed residences. So what that means is um, you have your own apartment, but your service charges are fairly high, although they do include the room service and they do include the maid service, etc., etc. So you essentially get all the benefits of living in a hotel while owning your property. Uh, this is a very popular offering in Dubai, um, and address absolutely nailed this model. Uh, but what I heard happening now, and I will not, please, please hear, hear me out. It's allegedly, I only heard murmurs from people in private who heard it from other people. So none of it is verified yet, but it sounds like we will be updating you whenever we see it verified or we see it debunked. I will talk about that. So please do not take it as absolute truth or do not take it as ex exhausting, uh, exhaustive information. And maybe we don't know the whole story. Maybe the story is just not true. But what we know is I heard from people who heard from people that people who have these hotel managed apartments actually had their hotel service recently revoked in a transition process. So now they don't get hotel services like cleaning, like room service. And obviously if you buy an apartment expecting those services, you'll be pretty upset when they're just randomly taken away from you. Uh, so that's the first concern for me, right? Um, if that's true, that's a big issue, and we have to talk about that openly. If that's true, I will be probably making a whole new bit about it, complaining, and will be less of a show for Omar after that. Let's just say that. The other issue we've got is what's going on, Omar? Like, why are you selling off your hotels? What's up? I always said that there's too many address hotels and they're washing out their hotel image. So I assume they're correcting for that. 
which is right decision, but why would you think that five luxury hotels of the same chain will be able to live within walking distance from each other? I don't believe that was initially a great move. Honestly, um, that's very early on in this situation. It's still very much developing, so we'll see more when we will see more. On to the next news. So we're continuing with the um, Dubai real estate. This episode is actually very, very little lifestyle and very much real estate focused. And honestly, there's a lot going on in the news and I try to focus on real estate sometimes. Sometimes I just prefer to talk about, you know, life and lifestyle here. But this week I picked up so many real estate articles which are worth talking about and worth discussing. The next one is by Kalish Times. It's Dubai rent set to climb 20% in 2024. So do I believe the rent prices will rise 20% in 2024? No, I do not. Do I believe some areas will grow by 20%? in rent in 24. Yes, I do. So I respectfully disagree with article, especially on the title, but what they say, there is not at all any signs of the slowdown in the market growth. There are signs of slowdown. There is no signs of impeding crush, at least at this point, but there is signs of a slowdown of the market and for me as a broker, it's not great. Uh, brokers make money on fast moving markets. We don't care if it goes up or down, we will make money. Uh, we don't make money when the market doesn't move or we make little money when market moves slowly. So same is true for investors, right? Either type of market motion you can monetize. What you can't monetize is stagnant market, yeah? market which is refuses to move right now market gonna slow down moving and i believe the income rates will normalize essentially the difference between your worst investment and your best investment will become less right um so once again the value of my expertise will be slightly lower not great for me but it is great news for investors investors will enjoy lesser risks and we'll have more of the wider appeal of creating smaller portfolios, especially if you're looking for smaller portfolio nowadays, Dubai becomes more attractive because you don't need to hedge as much as risks are inherently lower in the current market than they were, let's say, two years ago. This said, I believe there are some very strong growths, growth points in the market and Definitely migration to Dubai, the growth of population of Dubai is still exponential and still real estate will not be keeping up with the population growth, creating growth in prices, creating market corrections upwards. This is nothing terrible. This is actually great news. And once again, it's still a great time to invest in if you're looking to invest, reach out to us. I just kind of disagree with analytics, but the final idea is the same, right? Uh, Dubai rents not going to climb 20% across the board in 24, but I believe Creek going to be rising significantly, and I believe Hill's going to be rising significantly. There are more areas which I believe in, but that's a whole another discussion. It's probably a whole live stream. Anyway, on to the next news. And the final and the most important piece of the news, as usually, Arabian Business writes that Dubai kids tempted by gl glamour of social media influencers. Parents encourage it as legitimate career choice. Uh, so what happened here is um, I don't believe I'm all that much of an influencer. I don't have huge following, but... I'm doing the same grind, okay? <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm doing the same grind together with my job. And let me please say that the glamour is not there. Glamour is not there at all. Please see 
what I have to work with. Anyway, uh, and the parents encouraging it as a legitimate career choice? No, it's not a legitimate career choice. But I believe content marketing and what we do here is essentially content marketing, right? Um, is legitimate a marketing path. Although my father, who ran a number of businesses, is constantly uh, on my case saying that I'm wasting my time with all this YouTube, with all this social media stuff, with all this video production stuff. But... <laughs> Well, he, he can't do much about it. Where, honestly, I don't believe influencer could be a reliable career choice. There are so many unknowns involved in becoming a so successful social media influencer. And even more unknowns in retaining longevity in this field. That, honestly, seeing it as a career choice, I don't believe it's great. On the other hand, I believe that if kid did some social media for a long while since the childhood and work hard on understanding the algorithms, beating the, um, the platform and trying to be performing as good as they can on the platform given the variables they're given, they would probably make a great person to be trained in social media management in marketing and they will understand that much better as future professionals, so in all seriousness, I'm not against parents encouraging those hobbies. I'm all pro parents encouraging all children's hobbies if they're not harmful to th those children's and or they're harmful to somebody else, then probably not. Honestly, I played American football. I would, I would say I would not encourage my kids to do so. Not the healthiest thing to do. But in general, yeah, great news. Please encourage your kids' hobbies. Yeah, great. Thank you for making it through all the video. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more of them, we release them weekly. We release more other content. We're constantly testing stuff. Recently, we released our new... Uh, pilot vlog please check it out and press the bell icon to get notification when we upload and see you next week